This podcast contains adult language and stories of true crime. If you don't like laughing, crying, or being horrified at the actions of other humans, this podcast is not for you. Solvers, Eliza here. Um, if you were looking for episode 18 today, we are so sorry. Um, that episode's going to come out a little later this week. Allison ended up in the hospital this weekend with a sprained hand and swelling that would not go down. And Carlin was sick last week when she wanted to record her episode 18 segment. So those are both very important people to our podcast. Of course, Allison edits everything. So we just have a few things to finish up on episode 18, and we'll get that out to you as soon as we can. But today you can enjoy a listener short stack with stories from you guys. And thank you so much for understanding. Allison wanted you to know that she's read all your comments on Instagram and it means a lot to her that you support us. We feel really bad pushing an episode out, but we knew you'd understand. Okay, thank you. There we go. All right. Listener short stack. Woohoo. Hi, Resolvers. Number three. Number three. Um, we're going to read you some things that you've sent to us. And if you would like to send us something, you can email us at resolvemysteriespodcast at gmail.com. You can also send us a little letter. You say it, Carlin. P.O. Box 14005, Portland, Oregon, 97293. Yep. All right. So this first message is from Bridget. Bridget says, hi, ladies. Um, I just listened to your first short stack and I wanted to write in. I started listening to your podcast around late autumn, and although I was instantly hooked by the subject and how amazingly well you all work together, what truly sealed it for me was when Allison mentioned the book Strange Piece of Paradise. I read the book, I read that book the year it came out, and it has stuck with me to this day. I'm now an Unsolved Cases podcast addict, and looking <laughs> back, I can see that this book was the beginning of the love of the format for me. Mm -hmm. The book reads like a well-researched true crime podcast, and I would love to see it get more recognition all these years later. Anyway, thanks for mentioning a book that still rattles around in the back of my brain and keep up the excellent work. And then she sent us a second message a little bit later, and she said, could we get an indifferent stars above check-in? <laughs> LOL. I'm still talking about it after finishing it. So I was actually, this is Eliza, and I was the one who read um, Strange Piece of Paradise or actually listened to it. Uh, it's incredible, and everybody should read it. Listening to it is really good, too. I can't remember if we've, like, talked, when I recoed it, if we talked much about what it was about, I think, maybe. I think you briefly mentioned uh, this is about one person who could recall and one person who couldn't. Yes, but they both experienced the same trauma of almost getting murdered while camping in Oregon. It's horrible. Jesus. Um, and then in Different Stars Above, both Allison and I read that, mm -hmm. and I read it after her. I don't know what to even say. I still honestly think about it every day. Yeah, it's one of those books. I it's, need to read it. It it's, is so much more like I had just, because you hear the Donner Party just all the time, and there's so many jokes about it, and so it's just part of like our pop culture, basically. But it is so much more than that. It's fucking crazy. And I think I maybe said this, but like I think it was 20 12 or 14 men died before the first woman died, which is like my favorite. Yeah, fact. that's great. Especially because those women, I mean, they had children. With they were them. carrying two year olds it's in insane. snow that would go up to their hips. Yeah. Oh my God. Walking and miles. And how was this information collected? I think through firsthand research because there were some people who survived. Yes. Well, and I'm assuming somebody kept journals or something. Yeah, but they had to eat everything like they, they were had eating, they carried nothing out with them they, they had rags nothing. on yeah. yeah and they were eating whatever they could i mean god they were eating shoe i think they were actually eating shoe leather or oh yeah yeah before they would eat each other yeah and, and the decision to eat each other was so like it was not cannibalistic at all it which I also kind of always thought it was that like oh these crazy people just wanted to eat each other because the Donner Party is just taken so lightly, but, but it, it was, was more like not. I will sacrifice myself for yeah. Well, there was one person who said that, and then there was just sort of this like rich, like not a ritual, but um, you know, people whose family had died, like they wouldn't eat a member of their family. Yeah. Just like there was yeah, this yeah. whole code that sort of organically yeah. evolved, and then it turns into like 
a, a crime book towards yes. the end, yeah. wow. you know, cause like there, th- this crazy thing happens. And I think, yeah, it must've been through interviews with the survivors, but even when the people went back to try to get them, they had to stop oh, because God, they got yeah. stuck. I mean, the whole yeah. thing is just the fact that anyone survived that, let it's alone crazy. as many people that did is astonishing. I mean, it just speaks to what the human body and yeah. what you can endure. Yeah. And the real danger started when they fe- they made camp because they got stuck and then people started going out to try to get help and like those people got stuck and then the people in the camp was mostly like women and children and they mm-hmm. were like totally screwed. The people but the people who were traveling were also totally screwed. It yeah. was and then nobody knew where each other was. Oh. Um and then towards the end when they've been like starving oh, and freezing forever. So like, like many of them are dying, but then um a couple people start to go totally crazy. Yeah. yeah. And so they don't know if some of them killed, you know, others on purpose and it's, it is incredible. Yeah. Um, yeah. And the research that this guy did, Daniel James Brown is the author. I so good. So it's the indifferent stars above the harrowing saga of a Donner party bride. It centers a lot around Sarah Graves. Who's the Donner party bride their bride. They're mentioning, but I wish that wasn't the title. Cause it really is about all of them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I re- I didn't even feel like they, I feel like they used her as a reference point, but at some point I forgot it was even supposed to be. Me too. You know? And maybe he felt like he kind of had to do that because it's such a huge story. And people would have just not taken it on if they thought it, that it was going to cover all of it. Yeah. But yeah, I, it's a book that I do truly think about like every other day. Wow. Yeah. It's one of those books that just stays with you. It's so incredible. And I was, re- I think I maybe said this, but I was reading it when it was snowing and I was freezing inside. <laughs> And then Strange Piece of Paradise, for anyone who's just hearing about it now, is written by Terry Gents. We've had a few people reach out to us, maybe more than a few, who are like, I love your book recommendations. We were thinking that we would come up with a summer reading list of maybe four books, and they could have topics that relate to Unsolved Mysteries or what, what we're interested in, and that we could, I don't know, have a book club about it or something. Yeah. Like a summer, you know, a little summer reading. A nice summer read. We'll let you know. <laughs> All right. I have the next message, which is from our listener, Jenny. Jenny! Previously mentioned, she's hilarious on Facebook. So if you're not on there for whatever reason, get on there just to read Jenny's stuff because she's funny. Jenny says, calling out all research nerds, file under lost loves. My mom's BFF was dropped off at a church when she was a baby. Growing up, she was never adopted, but put into the, quote, finest places in England for orphans. The nuns who raised her always told her that her mother was, quote... Oh boy. Probably from a band of gypsies Ugh. due to her dark features. Oh boy. Yeah. However, when it was found out she was abused in any way, she would be moved into a mm. different, rich, well established orphanage and later put into good schools and everything paid for. Uh-huh. That's Thus making her and her caretakers believe that her father was likely royalty. <sighs> She married an American and was surprised to find that her wedding and any expensive bills were always anonymously paid for. What? Clear until they came to America. She contacted Uh. Unsolved Mysteries and they went as far as filming the interview before they got a phone call from the producers (gasps) saying they weren't going to air her story. No reason given. Oh she believed that her father must have been pretty powerful and probably <sighs> still alive at that point, having been able to stop the production. Oh, and how <clears throat> would he even know? That's crazy. Fast forward to the age of DNA and ancestry, where she was able to find out that they were off base. Her father was from Romania. Romania. He was Romania. Okay. Yeah. Her father was from Romania, and her mother was the wild child of a rich aristocratic family. That is so cool. Like that probably is so... English. Yeah. Uh, I think they had titles, but wound up not being royals. <sighs> they were on the right track, though. No. Oh my God! Isn't that crazy to have everything anonymously paid for, but still be uh, an orphan? It's the saddest thing ever. I mean, it's not sadder than <laughs> being a normal like... off orphan, but <laughs> it's still sad. It's a little less sad. It's like um, the little princess. On that note, we can't find a single thing out about her mother. She would so much like to know anything she could. Wow. She grew up hearing nothing but slurs and slanders regarding her mom. And oh. now we know she was probably oh. just a victim of time and society. Oh. Wow. And then she says, what are your best ways of researching things? Google has failed me. I can only find a small mention yeah. of her mom in a book with tiny grainy black and white photo that may or may not actually be her. So she knows her mom's name. How does so, Jenny know? So Jenny, it's Jenny's mom's friend and i guess 
at this point, she must know the name because she did the ancestry or the 23andMe thing. So it came back. She must know the name of her mother and father. We have American ways of finding things and it still fails us. I mean, for us to try to dive into like stuff in the UK would be absolutely impossible. But we do have listeners in the UK. So if there's any armchair detectives out there or anybody that's done any sort of genealogy work or anything like that and you want to reach out, send us an email, resellmysteriespodcast at gmail.com and we'll put you in touch with Jenny. And Jenny also said that she was going to provide some more information. Okay, maybe she will. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love that story. That story on it, you Okay, honeys. It's cinematic. Yeah, I mean, it's insane. truly cinematic. Yeah, but she might be protected too. Clearly, she's protected because they're yeah. somebody was paying. paying off somebody. Ah, oh, that's so cool. That not is cool. cool. It's not cool no. to not know. Yes. And I hope <laughs> she's doing well now. That woman. That's yeah. really sad. That's crazy. Thanks, Jenny. Thanks, Thanks Jenny. Jenny. We love you. Ah, this is from Maggie, who is an Australian listener. We have two letters from Australians. Oh, I love it. I know. No. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Maggie's Australian. Mm -hmm. So uh, Maggie writes, Hi, I just thought I would share this case with you girls. It is one of Australia's most infamous unsolved mysteries. Kelly Lane grew up in Sydney's northern beaches. Hi, teacher's pet. Mm. She was a high achiever and played water polo at an international level, and is currently serving a jail time for the murder of her baby, Tegan. No. Kelly became pregnant as a teenager and had the pregnancy terminated. She didn't feel good about this, so the following two pregnancies she had a few years later, she carried to term and gave the babies up for adoption. Here's the crazy part. She kept these pregnancies a secret from her family, partner, friends, and teammates. What? All while competing at an international level, wearing a bathing suit. How? How? Kelly then fell pregnant again and again, carried the baby to term. She took herself to the hospital when she was in labor and gave birth to a baby girl, Tegan. She presumably left the hospital with Tegan, but a few hours later arrived as a guest at a, fr- oh at a friend's God. wedding without the baby. Oh. Tegan's disappearance was discovered by authorities several years later and quite by accident. Kelly was questioned and was extremely distressed by the thought that her family would discover her secret pregnancies. She said that she had handed Tegan over to the baby's father at the hospital, not Kelly's partner, but a married man called Andrew Morris or Norris, who Kelly had been having an affair with. The problem was that no one knew who this Andrew was, so Kelly ended up being convicted of murdering Tegan, despite the fact that there was no body. Funnily enough, she was charged by the same prosecutor who refused to charge Chris Dawson, the subject of the Teacher's Pet podcast, because there was no body in Uh, his case. I just feel like that prosecutor was probably a fan of Chris Dawson because he played whatever that's really? rugby. Yeah. 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 There's recently been a three-part documentary made about Kelly called Expose the Case of Kelly Lane, but I think it's only available in Australia. Oh, I want to watch it. After it aired, the journalist who made it created a Facebook page and publicly asked for help finding this Andrew Morris Norris. So far, no luck. I believe Kelly's case has been picked up by the Innocence Project. I'm not sure if she's guilty or not. And I don't see why she would murder the baby, given that she knew that adoption was an option and had done it several times previously. Yes. There definitely doesn't seem like there was ever enough evidence to convict her for the murder, though. So the question still remains. Where is baby Tegan? I just thought the story might be good for one of your patron episodes or even just for yourselves as it's interesting. Or for a short stack. So it is interesting. And of course, I looked into it because it's crazy. Um, So I wasn't able to find the three-part documentary. I was able to find it, but I couldn't watch it. Mm -hmm. That's how I installed the malware on my computer. Damn it. (laughs) It was like, just install this thing and you'll be able to do whatever you want. And I'm like, yeah, sounds great. (laughs) Meanwhile, like my husband's upstairs like, something doesn't feel right. (laughs) Yeah. And my body. There's a disturbance in the forest. There's a disturbance in the forest. Yeah. And it's my idiot wife downloading a fake flash player. So I wasn't able to watch it, but I was able to watch a like a new a sixty minutes news magazine kind of thing about it. Mm. It's a really insane story, just like Maggie said. Going over all of it would be its own episode. So, and I didn't have time. To- yeah, that's fine. Um, I know it's a short stack, but I still want to know more about it when somebody writes something crazy like Do this. Do you know what years this was all going on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, why did this woman not have? Okay, hold control? on. It was in the nineties. I know that. Um, 
there, so one of the arguments was there was tons of access to birth control. So it seems as though the opinion in Australia has shifted recently and more people are thinking it's unlikely that she murdered her daughter. Kelly Lane is working with the Innocence Project as of 2018, although in Australia they are called Bridge of Hope Innocence Initiative, RMIT University. And like the Innocence Project, they only accept cases they think will most likely be overturned. Yeah. The question remains, where is Tegan and who is Andrew Morris Norris? As a few months ago, a witness named Natalie McCauley came forward who was friends with Kelly at the time and said that Kelly spoke of an Andrew at the time that Tegan would have been conceived, but that when she spoke to the police, the police basically just ignored her and didn't care. There's also a a couple podcasts about it. One is called Problem Child and it's currently releasing episodes. So I think they're on episode seven. And then I found a podcast called Expose the Case of Kelly Lane. And I think it's a companion piece to the show. Oh, I listened to that yesterday. Um, The investigator is convinced that Kelly didn't murder her daughter. Kelly apparently admitted at some point to the investigator, she isn't totally sure that the name, the last name of Andrew would be Morris or Norris. She kind of just made it up. Um, Mm. The investigator thinks that she used part of the real name being Andrew and then made up a fake last Mm -hmm. name. I mean, and maybe like changed it. Yeah. Not remembering what she had said. Well, so, you know, the first time they interviewed, she said his name was Andrew Morris. And then they interviewed her a, either a couple of years or a couple of months later. And she said, yeah. his name was Andrew Norris. And they said, did you say Norris or Morris? And she said, Norris. Oh, and yeah. the interviewer said that she has the tendencies, a lot of liars have the tendency of just changing a little bit of yeah. the truth. Like, you know, when, when you used to be at a bar and someone would ask for your number. And you would give yeah. you your number, but you would give like a digit off. Yeah. That's, so that it still feels believable. Yeah. yeah. So that's kind of what the investigator is thinking that she did. Like we can't go into it, but apparently her family was really strict. So she was training to be an Olympic water polo player. Mm. So she was in the water all of the time. But then it seems like this area, this like Northern Beaches area seems like yeah. shit was shady around there. Shit was shady around there around that time. Yep. And there are people that are like, oh no, we all knew she was pregnant. We just like would talk about it, but we would never like tell oh. her. Yeah. So it seems like there's a lot of like a lot of gossip, a lot of hearsay. But there's arguments, you know, why would she why would she kill this baby after she had a terminated pregnancy and then adopted out two more. Yeah. Yeah. And then they go into like, okay, well, if that's true and she did hand this baby over, why didn't the, why hasn't the father come forward? Because she's been in jail for 18 years. Wow. So she's in her forties now. She was in her like twenties and she got pregnant with Tegan when she was in her twenties, but still felt such shame at getting pregnant out of wedlock that she hit it. She was in her twenties. It's not like she was 13 or 14. Yeah. It's a really complex story. It has a lot to do with slut shaming. And when this was in the papers initially, she was like this cold, dead eyed monster who just gave away babies and aborted babies. Yeah. One of the issues was that at the time in Australia, things like rugby, polo, there's a lot of, there's a huge drinking culture. I mean, Mm -hmm. there's a huge drinking culture in Australia anyway, but I think basically she was just partying a lot and she was supposedly on birth control, but probably not taking it with regularity. And if you're wasted and you hook up with a guy, like it, Maybe you don't know his name. There's a there's a lot going on here. So it's a great case. We're going to link to the podcast in the show notes. And if you're in Australia, you can just Google it and you can watch the three-part yeah. series. If you want to Google it, her name is spelled K-E-L-I. Yes. K-E- Kelly Lane. Kelly Lane. This is interesting because like you were saying, the same prosecutor would not prosecute mm-hmm. Chris Dawson. Yeah. He's a pro- probably because he's a big sports guy and fan. Mm-hmm. But then, you know, she's into sports and is going to be could have been an Olympian and wow. that reminds me of the just recently this year that woman Taylor Harris who plays for the um, Australian like football league for women uh-huh. who took that a photo was taken of her kicking a ball but like it's just her doing the splits in the air everyone in Australia knows what I'm talking about it's this uh-huh. and people are just totally shaming her. Why? Because they, they're they like, that's a private part of her body. How dare she show that, basically? Are you kidding me? Oh, my She's God. Kicking. Yeah, this was a huge deal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
And so really, what? really what happened is like newspapers took it down because they thought it was inappropriate. And she's like, you would never do that to a man. Yeah. You can't praise me for being like a strong woman. Also, do it doesn't like matter. Dance and gymnastics exist there because that's all you do is show your crotch all the time. <laughs> you know what true. I mean? Like, So it's up to her whether she wants it shown or not. And yeah. she's fine with it because she's like, I'm a badass. And that's not just Australia. That's everywhere. Oh, yeah. Slut shaming is international. Mm-hmm. It's the great international pastime. Uh, yep. Thank you for writing in, Maggie. That was a really great case, and um, I'm excited to learn about it. And if you're Australian, you probably know all about it already. But if you have an opinion, I would love to hear it because it seems like people are pretty divided. All right. Yeah. Okay. Um, this is from Nikki via Facebook, and she is an Australian listener as well. So she says, hey, ladies, I'm on the train on the way to work here in Melbourne, Australia, listening to episode 15, Who's the Psychic Now? Yes, I know I am super behind. Please don't hate me. I promise to catch up. You're not that behind. You're Honey. really not that behind, girl. Um, she says, I giggled as you talked about trying out your Aussie accents and thought I would pass along something I heard only last week, which may help you. Okay. Love. Nikki, I'm going to keep reading, but also thank you because I thought maybe everyone would be so annoyed with me. And it's getting better. It's getting better She's even really than working. what you heard. I've worked so hard. Um, <laughs> she says, it turns out us Aussies can be pretty lazy and we pronounce the letter T more like a D, particularly when it is two T's such as in letter. So we say letter or letter. Well, we kind of say letter too. Say letter. Um, the example I was given to try was peanut butter. And Aussie will generally pronounce this as peanut butter. Butter. It sounds ridiculous, but a quick poll around my office found it to be true. <laughs> I love how she took a poll around her yeah, office no, for us. She's like, say <laughs> peanut butter. Say peanut butter. <laughs> By pronouncing the T as a T, it sounds more British rather than Australian. So with all the vowel stuff peanut going on butter. with their, you know, oh, their vowel sounds are similar, I think. So then some of those consonants have to be a little bit different. She says, of course, we all have different accents depending on what state you are from. However, most Aussie accents sound fairly alike. However, if you want to know what a real Aussie bloke sounds like, please check out our national treasure, Russell Coit. I don't know if it's Coit. I think it's C-O-I-G-H-T. And she linked us to um, an, amazing. an amazing video. And now I think it's called I'm an Outback Man or something like that. Yeah. Now I exited out of the video. <laughs> and we got to see an Aussie man's butt. Thanks. <laughs> There was a butt. Was he a national treasure, like in the way David Hasselhoff is a national treasure, yeah, like I an ironic if, national treasure? Yes, I would like to know more. Um, Nikki, we need more information. Yeah, please, yes. more information. But we like, really liked it. Yeah. So okay. So she says, um, as an aside, I also wanted to thank you for the fraud segments. Yeah. What? What? <laughs> we have one fraud fan, and she's not mad at us that we don't like it as much as the others. Yeah. I, I mean, we don't like it, but we still research it. Yeah, we do. We do our work. Um, I work as a fraud analyst and genuinely love my job so I find these segments so interesting I love that that's great um, anyway hope the tips help and I look forward to hearing your accents in a future episode much love Nikki um, and then I wanted to add one more thing so one of my close friends and I we looked up the difference between a Kiwi accent and an Australian accent because we were trying to figure that out and there there is a YouTube video and it's um, accents with Amy and she is incredible and when she is like teaching you, she's just bouncing back and forth between American, Australian, and Kiwi or New Zealand. She tells you all the little differences between like the vowels and oh, she's just my favorite. So she's um, so good. We will link yes. to that. I was in Seattle <laughs> visiting a friend, and she has a shop, and it's called Editor Consignment. But I was Shut saying, up. I was saying to the people, should we go to Editor? Nice, <laughs> that's good. That good. Thank you, Nikki. Thank you, that Nikki. Was a fun one. That yeah. made me feel so um, appreciated, validated. Yeah, yeah, validated. That's the word. All right, so this comes to us from a listener named Meredith. Her social handle is Meredith, a.k.a. She writes, hi, you humans are fantastic and so fun to listen to. Now, on to the small town mysteries. It might be long, sorry, but I think they're both good. I'm from the pinky, quote, of Michigan, uh, Sutton's Bay, Traverse City. Sutton's Bay has a population of roughly 400. Is that right? Dang. That's like... I also never knew it was called the pinky. Oh, I... I, I didn't know it was called Michigan. It's Michigan. <laughs> oh, I just mispronounced it. <laughs> I think it's called Bitchigan. <laughs> 
Okay, keep going. Oh. Um, Sutton's Bay has a population of roughly 400. Traverse City has a population of 14,000-ish, but grows to hundreds of thousands in the summer months. The first story is from Sutton's Bay. In 2001, I believe, there were seven arson fires set around the village. Whoa. Someone had just destroyed the local market a few months before they set another structure on fire. My grandma's house. No. Ugh. My grandma, the <gasps> legally blind, almost deaf, and can't and couldn't smell badass that she was, was woken up by the family dog in the middle of the night. <sighs> grandma immediately said, Sonia, I think something's wrong. <gasps> and they led each other to the neighbor's house to call 911. I'm going to cry. I know. Three days later, in the middle of the night, the house was set on fire in three separate places, and they had to bulldoze the house to get the fire out. This is crazy. The arsonist has never been caught. The cool thing was, when we were going through what was left, the only thing my grandma wanted found was her favorite necklace. Minutes later, hanging from a nail on the staircase, the only part of the house left standing was a necklace. It was crazy. That's crazy. It is really crazy. Yeah. And then she says, okay. The second story is from Traverse City. And it's pretty damn sad. In the wee hours of the morning on July 5th, 2003, Kelly Boyce Hurlbert was riding her bike home from work as she did every night. When she was a block away from home, an SUV came up behind her and hit her. Her and her bike were lodged underneath the vehicle until the bike dislodged halfway down the block. Neighbors heard her screaming and ran out of the house to see what was going on. Some called 911. The vehicle stopped at the end of the block and Kelly fell out. Her neighbor rushed to her side while on the phone with dispatch, and a couple of minutes later, there was an ambulance on scene. Kelly died later that night at the hospital with her husband oh, by her side. God. The police and FBI have followed thousands of tips, but it has yet to be solved. My stactastic impression starts here. If you have any information that would help the FBI or local law enforcement solve this murder, please contact the Traverse City Police Department or go to the FBI's website to see where to send a tip. There is a $25,000 reward available for any information leading to the arrest and conviction of this person or people responsible. I didn't know Kelly well, but what I did know was that she was a light to everyone who knew her. This was a senseless act, likely by someone intoxicated, and she deserves justice, like everyone who was murdered does. Thank you so much for reading and sharing your stories, laughter, and love to those who listen. Meredith. Thank you, Meredith. Yeah, so I looked into the hit and run, and it, it, actually, she said 20, 2003, but it was 2013, which is good because it means that it's more likely yeah. to be solved. So I think uh, it was just a typo. I read a 2018 article from the 9 and 10 News website, and there's a video that accompanies it. This story is such a gut punch. This person dragged her, and they just kept driving. All of these neighbors came out. I mean, it's just so upsetting. And I think maybe the public knowing that she was screaming the entire time and the driver didn't stop is probably what's preventing the driver from coming forward because it's such a disgusting, horrible thing to do. Yeah. But too bad. Like you still have to come out and say that you did it. Even if you were wasted, you woke up, there's got there's car damage. It's horrible. As the last year, the police have gone through more than 800 tips and are still looking into around 60. Like Meredith said, there's $25,000 reward. The Traverse City Police Department's phone number is 231-995-5150. And we'll also link to the FBI page where you can contact them anonymously. Um, I set a Google alert for Mm. both Kellys. Um, this one and Kelly Lane from Australia. So we're going to keep you updated and hopefully well, someone will see justice. That's it's crazy. crazy. Yeah. I mean, so they interview her sister in the new segment and her sister just keeps saying, what if it was this person's family? I would never wish that on anybody, no. you know, and it's such a violent way to die that oh, this person, God. you know, her family deserves justice. They really do. I mean, yeah. it's killing them. It's so awful. Yeah. And it doesn't make it more important, but she was young and adorable. And the first picture they show is a photo from her wedding. I mean, she just yeah. looked like she had so much life in her and ahead of her. That's yeah. awful. Yeah. So thank you for writing in with that, Meredith. Those were both really interesting stories. Yeah. So. Thank you. Do you want to say what we're doing? Yeah. So for the first time ever, we got mail. We have got two letters from our dear, dear listener, Lauren, who we love so. And then we got a mystery package. Yes. And this mystery package is from... Renee. Renee. Yeah. Here we go. Please don't be poop. Please, Please don't be poop. Please don't, don't be poop. Oh, okay. Oh my God, what is it? What is it? This is so exciting. 
Oh my gosh, it's an Unsolved oh Mysteries my God. mug. And it says update and then it says fuck yeah. Oh, oh my gosh, this, this is, is so, so great. great. <laughs> so Thank yeah, Robert you. Stack on one side and then it says update fuck yeah on the other side. Yes. There are all three mugs for us. So Renee said, hey ladies, I had emailed you a picture a while back of my updates fuck yeah shirt and figured you would appreciate the design on a mug. Yes. I co-own a printing business, an online store, which allows me to make any random or dumb idea a reality. In this case, I was packaging or orders while watching Unsolved Mysteries, and when I heard Robert Stack unannounce update, I quickly responded, fuck yeah. Yes! <laughs> An hour later, I was wearing it on a shirt. Um, she says, P.S. I'm excited for you to cover the Dennis DePew episode. When I was in college in the early 2000s, I would watch reruns of UM every morning on Lifetime before class. Mm-hmm. I had rented Jeepers Creepers the night before, and as this episode's <laughs> opening plays out, I lost my mind. It was an, almost an exact play-by-play of the beginning of the movie. Yes. The thing is, is this was still in the dial-up internet connection days. There was no way for me to rewatch the episode or reference it, so for years this drove me bananas. Aww. You should check it out when you get to that episode, but only the beginning, because that movie blows. <laughs> Cheers, Renee. Here's the web store if you feel like checking it out. Oh yeah, www.anxiousandangry.com These are so good. Renee, oh seriously, that was so thoughtful. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. And Lauren, thank you. We're going to open your cards up. I won't say what her last... Wait, should we say her last Name. No, I don't think we should. Oh, but she drew a p- picture. Um, look at what her last name is. Oh, so cute. She can draw pictures to show her last she name. She pictogrammed her last name. Pictogram, that that's, called? that's the word. So cute. Then she said, I love you guys so much. But dot 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 Uh-oh. in bigger blood budget, it's Cuyahoga. <laughs> Koi rhymes with guy and then hog like a pig. I hope that makes sense. Cuyahoga. Cuyahoga. Okay. Yes. I knew very well that I had butchered that completely because Allison told me Uh uh-huh she said she knew and didn't want to interrupt me well I always thought it was Cuyahoga so I would have been wrong too it's Cuyahoga yeah I was saying Cuyahoga yes (laughs) and then um she says I'm pretty sure it's Native American Anyways, you oh, guys rock. Sense. Keep it up. Uh, Aw, thanks, And she girl. said, fuck this pen because it's one of those damn pens that smears all over. <laughs> Next note, my personal resolved lost love story. We're going to get another note from oh, her. Oh, my we God. are all smiling ear to ear. That, that was, was so, so fun. We love mail. Um, If you want to send us mail, our P.O. box is 14005 Portland, Oregon, 97293. And we'll probably open it or read it on the air. We will clearly and freak the fuck out about I'm it. Gonna- <laughs> thanks, Renee, and thanks, Lauren. Thank you. And thank you, everybody who wrote in. Yeah, you want to say? Yeah, I'll say it again. Say it again. Um, if you want to write us a story, please do. Uh, Resolve Mysteries Podcast at gmail.com. And then we're also on Instagram at question mark? Re underscore solved mysteries. Re underscore solved mysteries. And you could also message us there and just say, hey, this is for a short stop because we look at those too. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then we're at Resolve the Pod on Facebook. So if you want to contact us there, you can do that yeah. as well. Thank you so much, guys. You make these so awesome and interesting. And this has been a not-so-short stack. A little long stack. Yeah. All right. right. Bye. Bye. I would not have made it. Yeah. Um, or maybe you would have. Who knows? No, like, I, and I think it's miserable. It's just not worth it to me. <laughs> yeah, I feel the same way. Like, Whenever I watched are, The Walking Dead and I was like, mm, I would be done in the yeah. first season on my own. <laughs> I would, it's just not know. worth it to me. Yeah, people are always like, okay, what would you do in a zombie so apocalypse? Awful. And I'm like, kill myself immediately? <laughs> <laughs> my husband is he's just a survivalist. Well, and you know, the big one's coming. Yeah, no. and eventually we're going to have a giant earthquake. He purchases these things and I, I say, great, yeah, that's a great purchase. And it truly is. Knowing full well that I will overdose myself immediately. <laughs> Don't yeah. say that. Meanwhile, I'll be at my house living on like Taco Bell hot sauce packets. <laughs>